Hello, everyone. This is Stephen Barlow, Technology Librarian at the Mandel Public Library of West Palm Beach, and I am here to share with you a DIY digital project. These are simple projects that you can do for yourself at home, or you can come into the digital studios here at the Mandel Public Library and design and create your mirror with our equipment. So without any further ado, this is the project that I will be sharing with you today. Since it's February, Valentine's Day, here is a simple pendant that you can create and 3D print here and share with your significant other or loved one. So for this project, you don't need much. Uh, really, all you need is uh, first a computer or a tablet. I recommend a tablet. You also need Tinkercad, which is an online 3D modeling program. It is completely cloud-based, so you don't have to download anything, but you do need to register. But it doesn't ask for very much information, just the bare minimum. It's very easy to use. Third, if you actually want to print it out and give it to someone, you will need a 3D printer or a 3D printing service. So we have a 3D printer here. So you can always come here for your 3D printing needs. Anyway, let's get started. So today I will be using this to complete my project. This is a 21.5 inch Huion drawing tablet. And this is why I recommend using a tablet, since you can use something like a stylus to do all your work rather than having to try and use a computer mouse. So if you have an iPad or an Android tablet uh, that has a stylus of some kind, it will certainly help out a lot. Or, of course, you can always come into our Digital Studio 4 to complete this project. Right. Now I'm going to dive into Tinkercad. Once you are registered and signed into Tinkercad, you will see a dashboard that looks much like this with any projects that you might have done. To begin a new project, you will hit Create New Design. Now we are in the work plane. This is where all the magic happens. So how Tinkercad works is you will take shapes from this right hand side here and drag them out onto the work plane and combine them together to create your own model. So this is a very simple model that we will be making and it only needs two shapes, unless you want to add any further customization on top of that. So let me show you the shapes you will need. The first and most important shape that we will be using today is the scribble shape. You'll find that down on the third row, right next to the sphere, and it looks like a scribble. You can just grab that, and bring it out onto the work plane. When you do it, automatically puts you in this flat face down interface with a little preview up here in the top. So basically you can draw whatever you like on this work plane. You also have some options down at the bottom. You've got undo, redo, we're currently in draw, but there is also erase function and there is also a draw shape, which is good for filling in. And of course, erase that shape. So let me try and draw a heart. I must warn you, I am not a very good artist. I like to use the grid to help me when I'm drawing to keep things even. There we go. Okay, so there's my heart. Not too bad. 
It's good to try and connect everything as much as possible within the heart. So I'm actually going to start with the middle. Okay, good. It's good to give it a little extra thickness on the sides, so don't go for too far in. There we go. As I said, it is very good to get that extra thickness. Make sure everything connects together so that it helps with structural integrity. Now my S is a little wonky. I think I'm going to actually use the undo key. I'm worried about it being a little too close together so it might fuse during 3D printing. So I'm going to try that one more time. Okay. That's a little bit better. I think I will go with that. So this is practically done. You're 90% finished. Once you are okay with your heart and with the two initials on the inside, all you have to do is click done in the bottom corner. Now it is on our work plane. If you'd like to pan around, and see how it looks, you can use the, the navigation box in the top. Or if you're using your mouse, you can use your right click and also pan around and take a look. It's a little thick right now, so the first thing you need to do is make it thinner. Because this would not work very well, say as a necklace, at this thickness. So you will grab this middle square and just bring it down. You can see the numbers slowly going down. Four is a nice thickness, especially for keeping the model strong when you're 3D printing. Now you are almost done. Now for our final shape, we just need something to act as a hole for a necklace chain or a keychain. So I'd like you to scroll down on your basic shapes until you reach tube. It is right next to the heart. So just grab a tube and pull it out next to your heart. As you can see, once the tube is out here, we have this inspector window that comes up. It has several options that we can play around with. There's radius, wall thickness, sides, bevel, and bevel segments. You can play around with this as much as you like, but I will show you my settings. So first, I will take my sides and put that up to max. Basically, that makes it nice and smooth. Next, I'll take my radius. You can use the slider. I'm just going to type it in. I'm going to put mine at 4.5. And I'm going to change my wall thickness to 1.5. There we go. Once again, uh, you can use the navigation box to look over the top. And I'm just going to use my keyboard to make them overlap. Once I've got them nice and overlapped, I'm going to, once again, just like I did with the pendant, I'm going to grab that middle box and I'm going to put it down to four. Now that I have them both the right size and the right dimensions that I like, I'm going to hold down my shift key and select both of my objects. You'll know that they both selected when they have that blue highlight around them. And with both selected, I'll go up here to the top. There is a button called group. You can either hit control G or hit that group button up at the top. And now we're ready to go. Our pendant is finished. Of course, if you like, you can come up here, change the color in the inspector window. It won't matter too much, but, 
but it looks nice here. Now that we're done with our project, we need to export it so that we can 3D print it. To do this, the first thing that is important is to actually go up and change the name of your project so that it's more easily recognizable once you've downloaded it. So you can click it up in the top left hand corner and choose whatever you like. There we go. Once you're finished with that, you'll want to come over here and hit export, download and 3D print in the top right hand corner. Click on that. You'll have a few different options here. We will simply hit download. So for 3D print, you'll want to choose STL. Voila. You'll most likely, if you're using something like Chrome, you'll see your download pop up in the, bo in the bottom of the screen. And now it is waiting for you in your downloads folder. All right. We are now in the slicing program. A slicing program is how the computer communicates with the 3D printer. So it is a vital part of the process. How I got here is I simply went to the downloads folder that I downloaded my awesome part to, clicked on it, and it automatically brought it into this program. So there are many different kinds of slicing programs. This one is MakerBot Print. It is what came with our 3D printer. If you have a different 3D printer, you're most likely using something different, such as Cura. It will have the same general look as this, but the settings will be different, most likely. However, if you come into our Digital Studios 3, this is what you will find. Now, there isn't too many changes that you can make to your print at this point, but you can change the size, which is very important. So I actually like the size of my pendant, but I'm going to change it just a little bit. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. So if you look at your right hand sidebar, there are some different changes that you can make, but we're just going to focus on scale at the bottom. Make sure that your object is highlighted. It'll have a blue highlight around it. Then click on scale. As you can see, you see the X, Y, and Z axes. X axis is the width, Y axis is the length, and Z axis is the height in red, green, and blue. And of course, you can also see here in millimeters your exact sizes. Now, generally, you want to keep uniform scaling checked so that you don't accidentally deform your object. But in this case, I actually want to change the X and Y, the length and width, but I want to keep the height the same. So I will, in this instance, uncheck uniform scaling. So in here, I'm just going to change it by percentage. I'm going to change it to 105. As you can see, it got just a little bit longer. Then I will also change the Y to 105. So now I made it just a little bit bigger, but that the height has stayed the same. Once you've finished there and you've got it more or less the size you want, I always advise going up here to the estimates and print preview. That will show you how long it will actually take to make your pendant. And that will also help you get an idea if you want to make it bigger or smaller. As you can see, this says that my time estimate is about 23 minutes. And you can also get a look at your model. The green part there is your model. The yellow part is the raft. For the MakerBot replicator, I often leave the raft on because it helps with the adhesion so that it sticks to the platform better. But you don't always need the raft. But for this to be safe, I'm going to leave it on. Once you're ready to print, 
It's simply a matter of going down and hitting the red print button. And here is the final product. As you can see, it is pretty cute as is, though the back does have a tendency to be a little rough having been on the raft. So I highly recommend giving it a touch up with some base and paint and even possibly sanding to really give it an extra shine. I hope you enjoyed this DIY digital project. And I hope to see you in the digital studio soon. Thank you very much.